This video is sponsored by Rocket Money. I feel like I have finally found the perfect shoe rotation. This took a lot of heartbreak, a lot of proper dating around, but I feel like I have it right this time. At this point, the team has not changed at all for a, over a year, almost two years really. And I'm currently still in love with it. And I feel like I'm probably not gonna change this anytime soon. I bet you're complacent with your shoe rotation. I bet you're no longer satisfied with your shoe rotation. Your shoe rotation no longer satisfies you. Just going through the motions at this point. Just each fit is the same, each day is the same. Where's the spark? Where, where's the where's the spark? What happened? I bet your shoe rotation's low-key annoying. And you're out here on Instagram looking at other shoes on Instagram, liking other shoes pictures on Instagram when you have a shoe rotation at home. That's crazy. That's crazy. Why are you liking other shoes pictures? You know that part of the relationship when you just low-key start hating your shoe rotation? This couldn't be me though. Anyways, we all know this feeling, man. This sucks, bro. This sucks. I hate this feeling. Everything I just said, all of this, oh my God. So today we're changing that. We're no longer going to feel like that. I have the formula now. No more randomly harboring resentment for your shoe rotation. No more randomly thinking and missing a crazy ex because you're bored with your shoe rotation. Shoe rotation. Just... Lock in, guys. We're up now. All right, so let me break down what I mean when I say perfect shoe rotation. The system is constructed of three core parts. They all need to work together. They all need to be there for the system to work. Obviously, I can't just give you a magical three-piece combo that's gonna work for every wardrobe and aesthetic. These, like, I'm not gonna give you three specific shoes that are like, this is the it. Cause that just, that doesn't work. Everyone's different and everyone's different. And you know what? I'm gonna say it. Some of you guys are financially challenged and hey, <laughs> don't blame me. Do not blame me for this. I did not make you broke. I'm just, but price is relative, okay? Like, I'm not gonna go out here and look at this shoe and be like, oh, this is such a good shoe, man. The student with a part-time job struggling to make payments should totally buy this shoe. Like, for some people, $500 for a pair of Ricks is just no face, no reaction. But for some people, $500 is rent, uh, bills, food, you know? And personally, I'm neither. Apparently, unbeknownst to me, I've secretly spent $500 on two Peacock subscriptions over the course. Let me break this down, all right? So a Peacock uh, subscription costs this much a month, right? And then you would think, okay, that's not much. How does that ever amount to $500? Okay, I have two of them. I just found out I had two of them. Two subscriptions, they're $6 each. They're 12 dollars a month, right? So how many months are there in a year? There's 12 months in a year. So 12 times 12, that's this number. And then this number times three is this number. And if you really think about it, apparently I hate myself. The funny thing is, right? I don't even watch anything on Peacock. I don't have the app. I don't even know what is on that streaming service. I don't remember getting it. And I've been I've been a tier three sub for three years, apparently. Dude, what am I f doing? But yeah, I mean, I probably would have let another $500 disappear from my life if it wasn't for the sponsor of today's video, Rocket Money. This is a real story. And if I did not get this brand deal, I would have not known. Is, which is insane. So Rocket Money is an app that helps you save money, cancel, subscribe, find these subscriptions. And most importantly is it helps you visualize your finances. It just puts everything from your all your bank accounts and all your cards into one interface so you can actually see where your money's going in and out. Unironically, this changed my entire life. But, you know, outside of the adult stuff, there is the funny small stuff that you think is funny, but I'm not even really joking. Like, Peacock Gate? I just, I actually don't even want to talk about it anymore because it's kind of sad. And I don't want you guys to feel the way I do because can you just imagine just $500? 
Anyways, I think it is the perfect time right now to try out Rocket Money as you can go to rocketmoney.com slash frugal and try it out for free. And I personally now, I love the app, so I have the premium subscription. But, you know, if you want to just try it out for yourself and see what you got going on, go to rocketmoney.com slash frugal. Try it out for free now. Everything is in the description. I'm going to break down how to optimize this system, but first let me introduce you to the individual pieces. The first shoe, and the most underrated shoe of the rotation, is the sidearm. And the sidearm is going to be the most casual, toned down, easy to wear, comfortable shoe of your rotation. It's going to be your go-to for basic stuff like errands, uh, going out for a meal, maybe even going to the gym. Just stuff that you're not really expecting to dress up doing. But low key though, this is kind of where you should start dressing up even if it's at least a little bit. Because really think about this though, hear me out, right? So, cause it starts innocuous, right? It starts with first you're not dressing up for things like going out for a quick meal or maybe even going to the store or something. Just something where you're like, I feel like I'm not really gonna be observed. I'm not gonna interact with a real person. Why would I dress up? There's not gonna be baddies at the post office. Why would I dress up? But then this bad habit eventually starts bleeding into when you have to do medium things like going to school or even going to work. And then before you know it, right, you've had zero good fits in the past week. And then now, because you're just like, oh man, it's been so long since I've dressed up, you're probably less inclined to even give it a shot, which will then make you not look good. And then which will make you not feel good. And and then bam, you're sad and you just think less of yourself and you have bad self-esteem. And this is all because you decided to get lazy with your sidearm and then not even try. And then the swagless domino effect will just carry on into your next life. So you might as well get a sidearm that's gonna have at least some style potentials so that you're just right there in the mix if you decide to step it up one day. Some good examples of popular sidearms are like the Sambas or the Forces. Burks too, Burks have been a really good option lately. I've been seeing a lot of Burks. I think the main thought process behind this piece is it should be really easy to put on both literally and figuratively. Just run out the door when you're late type beat. And also this should be the baseline of your style. You know, this should be the lowest common denominator of your wardrobe. Personally, my sidearm are gats. I've had these gats for about over four years now. I wear them when I walk my dog. I wear them when I go to the gym. I wear them when I'm grocery shopping. This is gonna sound stupid and excessive, but I ran a half marathon last year in these just to prove a point. And I have multiple variants of this shoe because I just love it so much and it just goes to prove how good of a sidearm they are in my wardrobe system. But even with all this crap, you know, I feel like I've completely sold you on this idea of this shoe and you're like, wow, why would I need any other shoe? But this is actually not supposed to be your most worn shoe. You're gonna probably wear this one about 20 to 30% of the time. But the reason why is it, I, it's too basic, it's too elementary, it's too simple, which is there by design, you wanted it to be like that, but it's not supposed to be the main shoe. You don't want to cap your style potential there, unless that's what you're going for, in which case, all power to you. I wish I was Amish, but here we are. But to keep things interesting and to maximize your style potential, you need the next leg of this trio, which is the Michael. The Michael, right? What am I, just naming shoes now? The Michael is what you're gonna be wearing with most of your fits. But like your actual fits, like from your default fits to dressing up, the Michael should clear all of this. It should work with 90% of your wardrobe. This is definitely the most important part of your shoe rotation, which in turn makes it the hardest shoe to dial in because this is the apex of your style. This is what you're supposed to be building your wardrobe around. So I think you should take your time when trying to find this one because this is what you're gonna be wearing to school. This is gonna be what you're wearing to work probably outings, functions, events, you know, just the main parts of life. You will be in these approximately 60 to 70% of the time. But even though you're tailoring this specific shoe to maximize your style potential, I feel like they should still be somewhat comfortable. Whatever the definition of comfort really means. Cause I know people that can't stand leather shoes. Like they're just like, 
unable to wear them. Like, I don't know what's going on, man. Like, but personally, I felt fine running a half in some gats. So again, you know, to me, that's comfortable, but different strokes. But yeah, man, I, just some people just don't like leather shoes. Like they just can't stand. Grow up, grow up. I can't wear leather shoes. What do you, eight? Do you hear yourself complaining about, oh, my shoes hurt. My, my shoes are not soft enough. Do you hear yourself? Some popular examples of a Michael might be some Ramones or some Wyatts or some, maybe some New Balances, maybe even some Jordan 1s or some Solomons, you know, just a good main shoe that kind of anchors everything in your wardrobe. For example, my Michael for two years straight has been this pair of Guidi back zips, which I know sounds crazy. Like, I can't believe you're wearing leather boots. Grow up, right? I've also been meaning to Vibram them, but I haven't done it. And I feel stupid because look at, they're absolutely destroyed. And I know I feel stupid, but it's, it is what it is. Apparently I would rather spend five bills on Peacock memberships. But you know, at the end of the day, as you can see, these get the job done. You can't deny these get the job done. They go with everything styled up and down, seamless. I wear these to parties dates. Sometimes I just wear these when I'm just cruising, when I'm just hanging out with friends. But the reason I bring up all this is because the Michael, even though it's supposed to look really good and be st easily styled, it should still be able to do regular shit. Like you should still be able to just casually wear this shoe. I know you're probably thinking, isn't that what the sidearm is for? But if you think about it, right, if your Michael is also somewhat comfortable, wouldn't you just look better doing most things in your life? You just be comfortable and your fits would be better. And then bam, you're fitted at the the post office because why not what if there is a baddie at the post office but it's just the more you you know the more comfortable it is the more naturally you're gonna wear it, and the more you wear it the more fits you build and it's just reps man you just get your reps in if you don't have a michael right now you should start there that is the most important this is the most important part just look at your wardrobe just think about it look at your wardrobe look at your favorite most worn pieces your most worn fits your most worn combos your most worn pants especially you got to think about that that is the most important relationship with this rotation that's really where it starts actually the pants shoes combo and then once you have that in mind you know what it takes for a shoe to be a michael this is a michael you know if you can't do this to your shoe then it's not a michael go find your michael okay guys now that the boring valuable information is out of the way. God, thank God. I'm so f***ing tired of giving value. I would rather be wasting your time if I'm completely honest. So the last and most fun part of this trio, of this big three, is the ace. Finally, we get to talk about shit that we're probably never gonna wear, but it seems cool in theory. So this is the shit that makes you feel untouchable when you get a fit off in them. This is the weapon, the secret weapon that you bring out when you gotta show out. And also, finally, we got a shoe. Who cares about comfort and convenience, man? This shoe, we're all about balling out here. You're probably only gonna wear this like five to 10% of the time, but in those five to 10%, you better dance. But yeah, this is pretty self-explanatory. Date nights, special events, even just times where you're just like, bro, I just need to get a fit pick off. I just need to look good. The ace is you at full power. But see, you're probably thinking, right? Oh, Christian, this feels so good. Like the way you're tucking this goddamn shoe up and like your full power, why would you not wear the ace all the time, right? Why would you not look your best all the time? Why would you not feel your best all the time? Why would you not build your best fits all the time, right? Brother, exactly, exactly, bro brother. Yes, 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 brother. That's exactly what I'm saying. Why wouldn't you do that? Anyways, if you wear the ace all the time and you're comfortable doing it and you like it and it's easy for you, then bam. That's just your Michael. The whole point of the ace is that you really only need it situationally. Like this only should come up at specific times when it's effective. For example, Rick heels, tabbies, or just maybe some crazy Balenciaga silhouette that, you know, like there's always something. There's always something. Just super aesthetic things that don't necessarily go with everything, but they absolutely murder when they're paired with a specific concept. Okay, I just thought of something crazy. So think of it like Dragon Ball Z, right? We've all watched Dragon Ball Z, guys. 
there are no baddies in here that you need to impress. You can admit that you've watched Dragon Ball Z, bro. There's no one watching. You've watched Dragon Ball Z. Okay, so the sidearm, right? The sidearm is like Super Saiyan 1. Because at the current, like, kind of somewhat modern state of Dragon Ball Z, like, let's be honest, guys. Super Saiyan 1, Goku and the gang, they're sometimes just chilling in Super Saiyan 1. Like, they're just hanging out. Just... Like, that used to be hard, but now they're chilling. But the thing is, when you're Super Saiyan 1, you gotta admit, you're still kind of powered up. You still look good. They got that shit on still. But it's calm, though. But it's calm. So you kind of get this vibe. So, Super Saiyan 2, though. Super Saiyan 2 is like the Michael. It's just more optimized, more stylized, a little more powerful, just a perfected Super Saiyan, right? It's not, it's still nothing too crazy. It's nothing too crazy, but you can definitely get some work done in some Super Saiyan 2 though. Like you can really put that shit on for Super Saiyan 2. It's easy to maintain, but it's powerful. The Michael, this makes so much sense. Now, right, the Ace. The Ace is Super Saiyan 3. Arguably the coolest form, one of the coolest looks, super powerful. We wish he could look like this all the time. But the catch, this is really hard to maintain. In the show, this form, Super Saiyan 3, it just takes up too much energy. It's exhausting to be in. It also just takes a lot to just get to this stage. You remember how much it took to just get here. You know, like with the Ace, you know, it takes a lot to put this shit on. It takes a lot to get to a point where you're maximizing the Ace. It took a lot for this motherfucker to get here. And these kind of lightning in a bottle moments are kind of just you when you're wearing your ace anyways this analogy is perfect super saiyan one two three i don't even know why i even bothered naming the shoes when i could have just done this from the start that actually made so much sense though also i forgot to mention with the ace even though it's supposed to be ambitious you should still be very honest with yourself like for example as much as i would like to think that the rick heels are my ace i feel like i don't wear them enough and you shouldn't pick something that you're probably never going to wear. And this might sound very basic with all this lead up and Super Saiyan 3 bullshit, but I feel like my ace right now is the tabby heels. I know it's not too far of a departure from the Gweedies, but for me personally, this is more of a feel thing. I personally love what I can do with some fits when I'm in the tabbies. And whenever I go out, I feel very confident in them. But you know, I talked about the Michael being a somewhat comfortable shoe that you can do shit in. The tabbies, these are definitely not as comfortable. I've sustained some of my worst blisters in these from just doing nights out, which is why I don't consider them my Michael, but I do love them. It's my go-to night out shoe. Okay, so now that we are aware of the Triforce, right? This is probably all you're gonna need 95% of the time. One of these three is gonna fit every occasion in your life if you actually just lock in and find stuff that properly fits each role. Anyways, this is the perfect system right here. Boom, just think about it for a bit. You have the information and trust me, bro, the Super Saiyan analogy is what solidifies it because why would it make so much sense if it didn't work? Okay, so now how do you get the system to work, right? How do you even use this, right? Well, I'm not gonna lie, if you just fucking listened, the system should work out itself if you just paid attention. Do I have to do everything? 